I did get a lot of good information about RCA, or at least Victor recording, from work that had been done in the early days of electrical recording. You know, Bell Laboratories and Western Electric Company were, were the progenitors of, of what became electrical disc recording. And since I had been soaking up every bit of information that came out about that, I was fairly well prepared to deal with, with Victor records until <laughs> later on RCA decided to attenuate the bass response on record so that they could get more time on a side. And all of the nice work we did in low frequency reproduction went down the drain. And there were there were periods like that when the characteristic curves were fooled around with. But then I we uh, formed a standards committee to try to nail down record response curves and capital records was the, the key of that. You may remember that yourself. Uh, Warren Birkenhead was very influential in helping to establish standards. And then we got the National Bureau of Standards. And, okay. and uh, they in encouraged us, and uh, we wrote a specification for disc recording response, you know, the roll off on the low end and the pre attenuation on, I mean, <laughs> pre emphasis on the on high end. Uh, everyone agreed with that curve except CBS. Goldmark had different ideas, and uh, he never did conform to it. When when Goldmark <coughs> initiated the LP stereo recording, uh, we had no information whatsoever, and I tried to guess at a pickup design that would play those records, and I guessed wrong. The, the first pickups we made for stereo were terrible, but we quickly uh, modified them when we found out the results, but we got no information whatsoever. You ask about what public benefit there was from the development of a, of a high quality reproducer. Well, the first benefit was that this lightweight pickup did not damage records, and you could play records many, many, many times without any apparent degradation. That was true of shellac records as well as, as vinyl. And it was a big surprise to me that the public took to this device as they did because we had designed it for broadcast stations and recording companies. It was never intended to be a consumer product. It, it was a professional transducer for people in the record business. So we found that we were selling them right and left to people who just wanted to play records at home. And the benefits were not only the sound quality but the lack of wear and tear on the records.